ominous being, Zogi. Not this crude matter. You must feel the force around you. Hello, my friends. It's been a while since we've been face to face. Uh, my apologies for that, but you know, life. Um, before I get you know started with the meat and potatoes of this uh, video, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Bernard uh, Cribbins. He uh, played um, he played Wilfred Mont on Doctor Who. Some of you um, must be Doctor Who fans out there, but um, he was uh, he was the uh, grandfather to uh, to Donna Noble. Uh, during the David Tennant era, and uh, he uh, passed away yesterday. Just a fabulous actor, fabulous man, just, you know, beloved by everyone, at least in the UK, and definitely beloved by uh, Doctor Who fans. So, um, rest in peace, uh, Bernard, and, um, and you definitely got me missed. All right, so this takes us to um, the point of the video. I was initially going to do a Thin Neck Thursday kind of thing. I was going to show off um, one of my Thin Neck Sabres, but I received a package, and uh, inside said package is a um, is a hilt from Corbanth. I didn't buy it from Corbanth. I actually buy it secondhand from uh, someone on eBay, and it's called the NW1, and uh, that stands for Mace Windu 1. And as the story goes, um, when uh, the Phantom Mess came out, some promotional material showed Mace Windu uh, standing um, in full garb and he was uh, given a lightsaber to hold. It wasn't the lightsaber that we would come to know and love from uh, the Clone Wars. It was actually um, just a clan saber and um, that's what the uh, Corbanth NW1 is and um, I in theory have one in this box and uh, we're going to unbox it and check it out and um, see what I've, what I've received. Now, the original um, saber is, or was, supposed to come with a extra set of fins and uh, it actually came with silver and gold fins and uh, what you're supposed to do is glue the fins that you want onto the saber to represent the uh, character that you want the saber to represent. Now, I don't know the exact uh, number or names of um, the, all the different characters um, that use the saber but I know that Plo Koon is one of them and um, well Mace Windu is one of them too as, uh, as well as several others and uh, I'm not going to humiliate myself by guessing uh, any other names at this juncture so this one has these silver fins glued onto it already which should uh, mean that it is Mace Windu's variant. And I, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but it's the Profi Saber, Neopixel. Whether or not the battery is charged, I don't know. But if it isn't, I'll just cut away and come back after I've uh, had an opportunity to deal with the battery situation. So here it is in the Corvette Savers box. Hopefully the install on this thing is um, not too bad. I've heard mixed uh, mixed uh, reviews. I I have a few uh, Corvette Savers and I have no issues with any of them. So here is what I received. My finger is on the battery holding in place. Lithium ion 13 or 18650. Um, let me see what we have. This is a uh, 3,000 milliamp. And uh, they sent me a charger. Actually, I'll just put that back in here. Here's the uh, lay retention screw. And, or the um, Allen wrench, whatever. And Corbett hilts tend to use a smaller, uh, smaller size blade retention screw and that's what uh this is is a smaller um allen wrench for said saber no i'm gonna put the hilt aside for just a sec very nice and let's just see if there's anything under here no there is not 
So, like I said, the extra fins are not here. If they were, they probably would have been here. So, no big deal. I know what I was buying. I got a pretty good price on it. And I couldn't resist it. So, here we are. First thing I want to check out is these, uh, these fins. They seem to be on there. very very well done so no complaints there got a Carbotech wheel it has kind of a I mean you know it's a clan saber but it has sort of a Darth Maul kind of vibe these little radiators up here this actually came with a blade plug I don't know if this has built-in LEDs like some do the stock style um, but at, at the very least it does have a blade plug and I know that this lights up so I don't know if it's the blade plug that actually has um, LEDs in it or if you know the LEDs are actually in the hilt but we'll see you've got these uh, the buttons and I have a Dorinian the Dorinian is exactly the same as this one you know about 40% larger and I'll probably be selling the Dorinian because well, now I have this and uh, so this is, I'm assuming one of these is the uh, the main switch and the other is auxiliary and probably have a two button system. If not, it's one button and the other one's just not used and just kind of free floats there. It doesn't seem to tighten as I turn it. And uh, so I'll just let you take a look at that. Very lovely, very nice. Look at these little greebles here. And I don't think these light up, but let's find out. Oh, well. Battery. Right? All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause this because I'm not going to rush. don't want to risk damaging the uh, Sabre. So I'll get the battery in there. And then, uh, and then I'll boot this thing up. <clears throat> and we'll see if it's working. So as it turns out, I'm actually kind of keen to show you the install on this Sabre. Uh, you can see the batteries in there. I like it when it's it when it's indicated what uh you know what uh polarity you 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 have. I mean, there's a intuition, uh, you know, you can kind of intuit how a battery goes in, but it's nice to have it marked. So this is a uh, the uh, Goth chassis here. On the other side, we have the Profi board and. Um, on, uh, well, there you go. You have your uh, micro SD card in the port for access to the Profi board. But on this side, there's an actual switch. Yeah. Gave my left and right wrong because it's a mirror thing going on. So if I turn that, it turns on, and uh, you can see it is illuminated. The battery is at about 76%, which is fine. And there are the uh, buttons right there. Um, I have a fan going, but it is uh, rather hot in here because I have the door closed. So uh, ambient sound from the rest of the house doesn't uh, leach in. So let's see. Uh, which way did I put this? I think I slid it out this way, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if there's any kind of cues for alignment you know I think you just have to kind of uh, oh actually there is so yes okay the way it works is if you can see let's see do, 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 do. there we go see where the screw from the uh, cover tech wheel um, sticks into the chassis or into the, the hilt well there's actually a groove in the chassis so if i line this up with that there we go and that guides it right in very cheeky i'm not sure how far to place that in but i figure if i put the emitter piece on I like this install. I like any install where you can actually remove the chassis. 
and considering that this is a couple years old as far as the design goes it's a, a nice surprise you now not sure how far I guess that goes to about there let's see will that turn on oh yes it does Ooh. Wow, that's loud. That's, that's amazingly loud. So much so that I might actually uh, I might actually lower the volume on this thing. I don't know what uh, version of Profi we have on here, how much it's been updated, uh, but there is, it is possible to, to lower the volume. I just, I don't off the top of my head remember how to do it. Set for not that you can probably tell, but it's set for purple. So this is probably the Mace Windu sound phone. Wow, that is stupid loud. <laughs> All right. No idea. That's nice. Now I don't know if these are default sound fonts. I did inquire with the uh, with the um, the person that was selling the hilt to find out what was installed on it, and near as they could tell, to them it was just a hodgepodge of the sound fonts that normally come on a Corbanth hilt, and uh, you know they're they're not really very descriptive. They, there's a bit of randomness to it, but it's not the default uh, teensy sound fonts. As far as I know, um, so hopefully no one's being uh, gypped by having sound fonts on here already. But I'm gonna go through them. Well, I'm not gonna go through them all because I've been told there's something like 20 on here. So the force is with you, young Skywalker. But you aren't a Jedi yet. Okay. <laughs> Nice graph like Empire Strikes Back uh, sound font. Always appreciated. The Force will be with you. Always. Kanan. Uh, <laughs> never go wrong with a Kanan sound font. He is, after all, my favorite Jedi. With uh, Qui-Gon being my close second. This is so loud. Are you getting how loud this is? I mean... <laughs> impressive. Most impressive. The dark saber. Jedi, prepare for death. Yeah, this is this is one of the those uh, sound fonts that you know just kind of appears, you know, randomly in in installs like this. That I, persistence and the force is my ally. Is that Ezra? Was that Ezra? Oh no, that was that was uh, Cal. That was Cal Kestis. Sounds good. It is obvious that this contest cannot be decided by our knowledge of the force. Only a Sith deals 
thousand absolutes. I will do what I must. I will do what I must. I will do what I must. I keep doing that. <laughs> Saber sounds so good. Okay, so I'm I am getting the impression that some of these sound fonts were, um, you know, installed post purchase by the previous owner. However, I do own all of them so far, so um, no transgressions have been made. Okay, do we agree on this? Okay. <laughs> These aren't the droids you're looking for. This part is over. Okay, so I'm assuming this one is over. Okay. Just so happens that I have a blade. Let's pop a blade in here. We'll see uh see if everything's working as it should be and then um Oh yeah, if I if I'm not mistaken, I think we remove this little piece right here. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, we have a retention screw here, here, here. And uh what is it? One, two, three. Kind of a Y shape where my fingers are. At equidistant intervals, and uh, I'm hoping that there's a a uh, retention screw in each hole. It's it's very important to be very careful. Now there seems to be one missing on this side, uh, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, also. It's a very interesting glue plug. It's nice. Okay. When you uh, lose one of these screws and, and you're in for it. Did I lose one already? No, I didn't. Okay. That would stink. That would stink. These things are always a little bit uh, difficult to tighten. They're so small, and the wrench gets stripped. Oh, this wrench doesn't actually perfectly match the diameter or the um, size of the screws. But anyway, that's good enough for now. And then you slip this on like this. And I don't know if this is kitted out for a 32 or a 36 inch blade. But, alright, here we go. Let's see how we, uh, obviously don't have this in deep enough. Or it's broken, <laughs> which would be a damn shame. And a very, very big hassle. Let's see, let's start this up. Okay. 
Fins are all intact. It's just not quite making contact with the fins. For some reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. comes away and hmm. okay well at this point I'm not going to uh, risk it so I'm gonna cut away one more time and uh, I'll come back and uh, see what I've uh, see what I've accomplished so as it turns out the um, the other blade that I had didn't quite reach the pogo pins enough to make the LEDs that are in the in the uh, the pin set turn off so I actually grabbed a different blade this is from my uh, Justin's Genesis custom savers vector and as you can see It is indeed working. Now, this is not the blade that I'm going to be keeping in here. I have a blade that's coming from uh, the Saber Merchant, and that's supposed to arrive tomorrow. It was actually supposed to arrive today, but it was rescheduled, as UPS uh, is wont to do whenever they feel like it. And if they don't feel like delivering it, they'll just bring it to the post office, and then you wait uh, an extra two or three days. That's what they do. Anyway, so I'm not going to secure this blade in here, um, but we do know that it's working. Um, there was a little bit of an issue with the alignment for the chassis. I had to push the chassis in a little bit more, uh, which involved kind of pushing on the end where the speaker is. Not enough to damage the speaker, but just to get that last, eh, that last like 30 second of, of an inch in there to, to make everything line up much better. And uh, in the process, one of these little greebles fell off, and, and it was pretty easy to find, but I had to put that back on, and, you know, it's a whole thing. These sabers tend to be a little bit on the, uh, little bit on the complex some side sometimes, and uh, uh, it, it's always an adventure. The main thing is to just not to, if you can, screw up the wiring, which wasn't an issue with this, and uh, not to thrash the uh, the soundboard, which is also not an issue. So um, well, there you have it. Um, this is the uh, Corvette. Uh, MW1. This is a uh, Mace Window Hilt, believe it or not. Or it's just a clan saver. Or it's a Flo Clune. Or it's whoever uh, you want it to be. Really, it's up to you. You have freedom. Carte blanche. You can do whatever you want. It's up to you. Anyway, um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps up this unboxing. And um, I appreciate everyone uh, showing up and being patient with me for a uh, not having quite as much content lately, but um, to be perfectly honest, I've been focusing um, a little bit more on my job, um, trying to, um, you know, trying to make sure that uh, I keep uh, my eyes dotted, my T's crossed, my priorities straight, and uh, so that has left a little bit less time uh, for this, but it's still a passion of mine, and um, I, I still have plenty of videos to make, so. On that bombshell, I hope everyone has a wonderful, uh, well, week's almost over. Tomorrow's Friday. Yay! Uh, and uh, may the force be with you. And um, we'll see you later. Take care now. Bye.